When should and shouldn't you pay cruise gratuities? One of the most controversial and hottest topics in the world of cruising. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. In this edition, I'm going to explore six things that you need to know about cruise gratuities and very importantly, whether you should or shouldn't pay them. First of all, what is a gratuity? Well, a gratuity is supposed to be, and its original definition, is it's a tip or a bonus that you give to somebody if they've gone above the norm, if they've given you exceptional service. However, in cruising, it's become something very different and it's actually become the norm, which is why so many people are getting upset about it. But it's supposed to be a bonus or a tip that you give someone for exceptional service. Now, when it comes to gratuities, there's three broad approaches that cruise lines take. The first of those is gratuities are included within the price of a cruise. Now, that tends to be more common on the very upmarket cruise lines. So the ultra luxury lines will often include the gratuity and they will say that gratuities are not expected by any of the crew. It is becoming increasingly common that more mainstream cruise lines are starting to include them. So cruise lines, for example, like Pino Cruises in the UK and Morella Cruises also in the UK have started to include gratuities within the overall fare. The second and more common approach is that they're auto added or you're asked to pay for them in advance. So when you book your cruise, you're given the option of paying for gratuities in advance or once you're on board, they're auto added onto your bill. And in some cases, it's very difficult to remove them. You can, of course, go up to the desk and ask to either increase or decrease the amount of gratuities, but they are pushed through by the cruise line by either getting you to pay them up front when you pay your final balance or by just simply adding them onto your onboard account and of course taking the money off your credit card at the end of the cruise. This can sometimes cause a lot of discussion because there is a lot of stories and rumors going around that actually there are lists put up and telling the crew if certain cabins or people have asked for gratuities to be removed. I don't know any evidence of this, although there are various anecdotal stories. The third approach, which used to be more common on cruise lines and is largely gone, although you do see it quite a lot on river cruising, is you're offered or encouraged to just decide if you want to add them yourself. So you can either hand them over as cash to individual members of the crew, or sometimes there'll be a box where you can go and put an envelope in where tips or gratuities are pooled. Certainly when I started cruising, the last one was much more common. You were given little envelopes and some guidelines by the cruise line. You'd put cash in and you'd give it to whichever members of the crew that you wanted. But increasingly, the second approach where cruise lines encourage or force you to pay gratuities is much more common. It can add a lot of money onto the price of your cruise. So most cruise lines will set a gratuity between $12 and $20 at the time of recording per person per day. And that also applies to children. So if you're a couple, it can add between $150 and $300 for a seven day cruise. So that's around about £150 up to £250 and about the same in euros. So if you're traveling as a family with two adults and two kids, you could be talking many hundreds of dollars many hundreds of pounds and many hundreds of euros added onto the cost of your holiday. And pretty much constantly, cruise lines are increasing the amount that they recommend gratuities should be. So why has the topic of gratuities become quite so controversial? Well, underpinning this is a lot around how crew members are recruited and paid. So gratuities have become a fundamental part of a cruise wages. So cruise lines are registered in ports of convenience, which mean that they do not have to follow the labor laws of places like the US or the UK or countries in Europe. So they register them in places where they're able to follow much more relaxed and less strict labor laws. So there's no things like minimum wages. So the view is what cruise lines then do is they then go out and recruit a lot of people from the Far East, so places like the Philippines, Indonesia, India, and they will pay them at a much lower rate. They then use gratuities to top up and give the crew members a much more balanced or fair wage. All the cruise lines are doing is using gratuities as a way of supplementing and giving the crew members a better wage. There's a lot of concern and discussion around whether the gratuities that you actually pay in through auto gratuities or prepaid actually get to the crew members and how much the cruise lines actually keep for their own profits or use to supplement much more senior crew or senior managers bonuses. So there's a real concern that actually the gratuities are not getting to the people that actually do the work and that you're interfacing with on a day-to-day -day basis. In reality, gratuities are increasingly, in my view, becoming a tax because 
All that the cruise lines are really doing is giving you a fare which looks much lower, but once you actually go on the cruise, they auto add gratuity, so effectively adding a tax. Of course, you can take it off, but all they're really doing is hiding the fact that your cruise is actually costing you much more money than you think it's gonna cost. So instead of paying the crew a higher wage, they're basically using gratuity as a way of making the fare look lower, but still making you coughing up and paying much more money than the fare appears to be. In practice, the gratuities are used to pay the crew a better wage, and it's not really for improved service. So when should you not pay gratuities? Now, here are the reasons that I see most people who go cruising argue are the times that you shouldn't pay. The first of those people argue when you cannot afford it. So it's an extra cost on your cruise, which you can't afford. Now, of course, many people would argue against that because they argue in reality, by doing that, you're not giving the crew a fair wage. So by removing gratuities and not paying them, you're actually getting the crew to subsidize the cost of your fare. So a lot of people then argue against that. Of course, you also shouldn't pay gratuities if it is bundled into the fares. There's no need to pay an extra gratuity because that's really covered. Of course, you may decide you want to because someone's given you phenomenal and really extra service. So genuinely returns to what a gratuity was supposed to be, which is an extra tip above the person's salary for doing an exceptional job. You shouldn't pay them when you're buying something like drinks or using the spa because gratuities are auto added on the bill. So often on a cruise line, when you buy a drink, you'll find that a gratuity is added often up to about 18% and the same applies in many spas. So you shouldn't then pay an additional gratuity on top of that because effectively you've got like a sales tax or a tax already added. Also, you shouldn't really pay gratuities, many people argue, to things like if you put your kids in the kids club, particularly if you're auto paying gratuities, don't give an extra tip to the kids club. If someone comes and fixes your room, for example, you've got a problem in your room and they come and deal with that, you don't give a tip for that. So any of those kind of services that are provided you would normally expect to be covered, don't pay an extra gratuity, particularly if you're auto paying gratuities into a central part because you're effectively then paying double gratuities. So when should you pay the gratuity? Well, of course, part of it is a discussion around whether you believe that the gratuity in practice is part of your overall fare. So actually by paying the auto gratuity or the prepaying the gratuity, all you're doing is making sure that the crew members who deal with you are getting a fairer wage, a better wage than they would if you don't pay the gratuity because actually they expect that gratuity so effectively you see it as part of your overall fare. Secondly, of course, if you generally have individuals that you see as providing phenomenal service, so someone's gone way beyond what you would normally and reasonably expect, and you really want to acknowledge that because they've done something absolutely amazing, and you may want to give them some extra dollars to recognize that. Another reason for paying into the gratuities through that central process is nowadays, we tend not to eat in the same restaurants. So increasingly with many different dining venues, specialty dining, we don't have the same server all the time. So actually by paying the gratuities, paying to the central part, you're making sure that all of those people that have served you across your week or two week cruise are actually getting some kind of recognition of the service that they've provided. The other reason for paying gratuities and particularly paying them individually is for people that are not gonna get part of that bigger part. So for example, people who work in the casino don't get a share of those overall gratuities. People running the tours and the bus drivers are not gonna get a share of those gratuities unless you're one of the ultra luxury lines where they do build that into the overall fare. Also people like porters at the port side who help you with your bags or carrying your bags, those kind of people are not gonna get part of the overall gratuity pot. So some people also see it really important as giving a gratuity to the maitre d'. If you have a lousy table and you want to move to a much better table, a gratuity is often a way that people see helping to make sure you get a better table. And certainly that's something we have done in the past. Gratuities are always going to be a controversial part of cruising, particularly nowadays where they are auto added and the cruise line almost enforces you to do it. They've almost added it as a tax. So the whole issue of gratuities is kind of a really bizarre one in my view, because it's not really a gratuity. It is a service charge, it's an additional charge, it's really part of your fare, because if the cruise line is kind of making you pay them, it's not really a recognition of service above the norm. One of the things, of course, that we do as consumers when we go out looking for cruises is we're often looking for great fares. And I guess as long as the cruise line knows that, and they know that actually by under pitching effectively the fare by a couple of hundred dollars, couple of hundred pounds, couple of hundred euros, because they're gonna catch that up. 
in gratuities, they're going to keep doing it because they know that often when we go looking for a cruise, we look at the fare and we forget a lot of those extra costs they're going to add on, particularly gratuities. Unlike on land where people have resort fees, which is another kind of tax, but they do at least bundle in extra things. What you need to bear in mind with gratuities on a cruise line, you're probably not going to get service above and beyond because it's just become part of the normal fare. Gratuities are a very hot topic and I would love to hear what you think about gratuities. Do you auto pay them? Do you take it off and pay people in cash? What is your view about gratuities and how do you think cruise lines should handle it? And please watch many more of my tips for travelers to help you get travel inspiration, advice and tips on how to make much more of your precious travel time and money.